I recently bought this jewelry armoire off Amazon. I love painting jewelry armoires, but sometimes when you get them secondhand, the inside lining is kind of dirty. So I wanted it to be brand new and I was either gonna gift this to somebody for the holidays or I would sell it. Even though this piece is brand new, I still want to clean it up. I just use my crud cutter and give it a nice wipe down. I don't have to vacuum or do anything crazy because it's pretty clean. And then I use some water afterwards to just wipe it down. Make sure there's no cleaner residue left on the piece. I'm going to be taping off sections on this jewelry armoire because I do want to keep some of the brown. This painter's tape is some leftover supplies that I had from a project that I did on Lick's YouTube channel. I recently took my daughter's room from this turquoise to a gorgeous pink and white using Lick paint. And then with the leftover paint, I got to paint this dresser. So the full transformation is over on Lick's YouTube channel right now. So you can head over there. I'll leave the link in the description box below and you can check out the results of this makeover. So using the painter's tape was probably the most time consuming part of this entire makeover because I wanted to make sure that I was getting a really nice finish. I didn't want to get, um, I wanted my lines to be nice and crisp and I don't want the paint to get on any of the liner. So I really just took my time and made sure that the painter's tape was in all the right spots. Then I started taking all the hardware off. I took the hardware off the drawers and I also took the hooks and I took the doors off so that I can get, again, just a really nice finish. Um, this way I'm not putting any paint on top of the hardware and I marked, you know, which side was left and which side was right so I would be able to put it all back in the same spot. Then I continued taping off. I'm telling you, the taping off is probably the most important part because you know, I could have painted all the insides of these little cubbies, but then it would have been all over that liner and I don't want to touch the liner. And we're going to use a gorgeous green and green definitely is complemented by wood tones. So it's going to work out perfect in the end. And as I'm organizing the right side from the left side with all the hardware, I also take the drawers out and number them. I want everything to go in right. This is brand new, so everything needs to go back where it belongs. And our next step is to add a bonding primer. I'm using Styx bonding primer. And I use an artist brush and I use a um, foam roller to apply it to the larger areas. Um, I, I love this primer. I use two coats, I wait three hours in between the coats, and then I have to wait a whole 24 hours before painting. Um, as long as you schedule this, then it's no problem. I definitely waited the time because the area, the surface on this jewelry armoire is so shiny um, and some of it is not real wood. So I wanted to make sure that I was going to have the best adhesion that I could possibly have for my chalk paint, you know, when it goes over it. And for the chalk paint, I'm using Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint in Palmetto um, for a base coat on this. And I do end up using just the palmetto as a solid color on the legs and some of the features on the jewelry armoire. But then other sections, I'm gonna do um, a stippling blend. To get the most out of my paint and to minimize brush strokes, I use my water mister. So I spray a little bit of water and then I apply the paint and the water really helps to knock down those brush strokes so that I get a really smooth finish at the end. Now for the blending portion of this, I'm using Dixie Belle's drop cloth. 
that's the name of the color and I'm just going to stipple it on and I'm gonna use so I have two brushes one for palmetto one for drop cloth and then another brush for blending them together and that's a dry brush the reason I'm using the dry brush is because as you can see everything is really wet and I don't want to muddy the colors together so using a third brush kind of takes away all that muddiness and leaves the colors where they're supposed to be without over blending them and I keep wiping the paint off of the dry brush just to make sure it stays dry and I follow this technique through most of the jewelry armoire some sections I'm only adding palmetto and then most sections I'm just blending palmetto and drop cloth together there are so many different ways to blend your paint. Um, I particularly love the way that it looks when you stipple the stippling blend. I think it's super simple and it looks really good. Also, I like um, the other way that I blend paint and give it that soft blend. You can see in um, previous videos when I do a soft blend, I love that technique. Uh, those are my two my go-to's but there are so many different ways you can cross hatch you can just swirl your paint around into circles until they meet you can um, just do like an ombre effect there's so many different ways to blend your paint so you just gotta try them and see what you like the best and see what works the best for you also um, something really important i want to say is the paint that you use matters um, you're not gonna get the look the same look that I get if you're using a different paint you can probably get close to it but it won't be the same I've had a few people mention that they've tried my techniques not mine but they tried these techniques and um, they weren't getting the same results but it turned out they weren't using the same paint so every paint is different so you just kind of kind of play with it and um, you know, maybe the stippling one's not going to work for the paint you're using. So you're going to try the cross hatching or, you know, just mess around with it and figure out what works for you. Now here is the wow factor on this piece. When I saw this decoupage paper, it's called Adeline. It's from Redesign with Prima. I fell in love. I actually had a few boards on Pinterest with really similar designs. And I was gonna recreate them with transfers and paint, but when I saw this, I thought, oh my, that's it. Like, I don't even have to recreate it. This is it. So I love this. The decoupage paper doesn't, it's not like paper paper. It actually feels like a dryer sheet. And it seems like there's a bit of a screen. So I went with Mod Podge as my decoupage medium. Now Redesign with Prima has a decoupage medium, but I don't have it or you could use your sealer, that's totally fine too. I just cut it out like you've seen with my razor blade. I put my Mod Podge down and then I apply the paper. And I mean, it's pretty s simple to smooth out because it's thicker. It's almost like, I would say between a paper and a fabric. Um, it doesn't feel like regular tissue paper that you would, you know, for a birthday present or something. It feels more like, like literally like downy dryer sheets so once I apply it and I just kind of fix the sides and make sure you know there's there's uh you could use your sander I tried to sand the sides off and that didn't really work just using the razor blade worked perfectly fine for me and then I used the Mod Podge and I did one coat over it So far we have our base coat and then the decoupage paper and now I need to do a second coat. I didn't really need to, the first one was just fine, but since I put the decoupage paper on, I kind of want it to like blend and look really, um, I don't know, I just want it to match really good with the background of the decoupage paper. So I'm going to add one more coat of 
the stippling blend and I'm gonna really pay attention to how, you know, I don't want it to be over blended. I want you to see some of that white and I want you to see some of the dark. So I'm just doing another coat. So once I finish the second coat and it's completely dry, then I'm using Dixie Belle's clear coat in flat to seal the piece. And I add three coats of the sealer. When I don't like the matte chalky feel of the paint, so I usually use a satin, but I don't want a satin sheen on this. Um, I find if you do three or four coats of um, the clear flat finish, you, you don't get that chalky finish. It does cover it and it's nice and smooth. So it's around three or four, but for this one I did three and that worked just fine. If you're someone who has a problem applying the sealer and you always get streaks, I would highly recommend using the flat finish. It's the most forgiving besides wax, but wax you have to reapply like once a year. And if I sell this, I don't want someone to have to reapply it. I don't expect them to do that. So I, I like to just use a flat finish or a satin finish. Most of the time it's satin. And I'll show you a reminder of, this is just the ordinary mass production to what we have today. I believe that this is a one of a kind, well it is a one of a kind piece. I love it. I did notice a couple of the seam marks in my decoupage paper, but I guess you can, you know, I can steam them out next time. I'll do that, but it doesn't really make a difference. For me, this is, it's one of my favorite pieces. I think it's so pretty. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and if you like it, you could just hit the like button and let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you want to see more like this, hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time.